Like most miniature hobbyists, I have been using this same airbrush spray booth that everybody's got online. And I say this same one because I actually wrote an article on Fohammer.com about two and a half, maybe three years ago now, talking about the best extractors and spray booths for miniature painters and modelers. And bar the odd one, you'll probably find in that article that most of the boxes are just variations on this same thing. And in some cases where you can get two of them put together, they don't actually go together properly, it's just something that they've said for the sake of trying to sell more. So I decided to go for the top choice, which is the Benchvent B3300D. And just to get it out there straight away, that D means ducted, so I have a hose going outside, rather than the other version where it's recirculatory, so you don't actually need to get anything out the house, but you are gonna have to spend more on filters. And I get it, this isn't for everybody, it's a big spend in order to get something like this. But for really strong enthusiast hobbyists who spend so much time in their workshops and their little hobby rooms, something like this is really important. Especially nowadays when you've got airbrushes and 3D printers on the go, and if COVID taught us anything, it's that air is kind of a big deal. So I got this kit with some extra filters and it is a big unit. The actual dimensions of it are shown here, but it's generally the surface area is about the size of an A3 sheet of paper, hence the name. And setup was literally take it out of the box and plug it in. But the airflow in this thing is actually powerful. Those cheap units are powered by nothing more than a small PC fan probably up to about 120 millimeters at its maximum size. This one is so strong, I can use the end of the hose to dry my hair. It's a fantastic unit. It's really simple to set up. You've also got a shroud that goes over the top and changing the filters is as easy as undoing the spool screws on the side, pulling the faceplate off, replacing the filter and putting it back on. It's worth recommending though that they do say, even if you don't use the filters, then you should change them after six months. That doesn't make much sense to me though, considering the extra filters I was sent weren't even in a polythene bag, they were just loose. So if it's sitting there in the ducting unit will cause it to go stale in six months, surely the same thing for the printers sitting outside. Maybe the science behind it, I don't know. The shroud over the top's really cool because this just velcros onto the side and it looks cheap enough that you could easily replace it if you get it covered in a load of paint. However, it's worth shouting out that there's no base on this, so anything you spray will go directly down onto your worktop. So what I got was just a couple of rolls of lining paper from my local hardware store and use that underneath the printer, and at least then it gives me a nice white clean backdrop that I can replace when I'm recording YouTube videos. But when I'm recording those videos, this shroud does get in the way. They do offer a different vent unit which has a clear perspex shroud over it, but the price of that was prohibitive, even for me who tries to run this as a business. But I'm sure I can fashion one myself with a few custom cuts of Perspex that you can probably order online, some tape and some double-sided Velcro. Despite the size, the suction on this is incredibly powerful. Don't get me wrong, it's not sucking my face into it like some giant hoover, but if I put a naked flame near it, you can see the direction of the flame is being pulled towards the vent, suggesting that the airflow is going in that direction. I would highly recommend you use it with the shroud on, however, because that's gonna prevent the overspray from going all over your desk, which is a problem I slightly had with an aerosol can because I was trying to record it and wasn't using that shroud so you could actually see. And don't get me wrong, this isn't strong enough to pull paint out of the air, but the point is purely to grab those fumes and to grab the atomized paint particles before they go up your nose, in your mouth and into your lungs. Now, despite what you wanna do or don't wanna do, I would still recommend wearing a mask with this because you're right up close to it, but the point is it shouldn't affect people in the rest of the house. You can also turn the unit on its back and for larger items, put them on the surface on the grill and just spray directly into the vent. For me, having this is a much better setup for my YouTube videos because if I'm painting something like these models from Ravage Star from the guys at Mini Wargaming, then I can get much better videos with a nice and replaceable white background and it lets you really focus on the model and what I'm doing in every shot feel free to, well, please go back and watch some of my earlier tutorial videos on how to paint things and you'll see just how disgusting and dirty my entire paint area was. Very distracting when you're trying to focus on a single subject. 
I will be talking more about these Ravage Star minis from Winnie Moore Gaming. I absolutely love them, I love the sculpt, and I'll go into them in a bit more detail, but it is going to take me a while to get them painted because there's just so much detail on these models. But if you're eager to learn more, I'll drop a link down in the description so you can go and check them out sooner. My favourite thing though is the fact that this unit is actually rated for aerosol cans, so if you're a fan of spray cans for your primer, and I do like them in certain scenarios, then you can actually use this inside. Yeah, you still get a few of the whiffs off it, which is why I'd recommend wearing a mask, but I just left the bench vent 300 running for about 5 minutes after I finished spraying, all the smells and fumes were gone, vented outside, nobody in the house complained. This is the bit where I should have had the shroud on though because some of the overspray particles went all over my desk and I've now got a dusty black texture on everything that I need to go and wipe off. So yeah, like I said at the beginning, it's not for everybody, it's a crazy expense for most people, and yeah, those little hobby booths will be fine for most. I would still recommend even if you've got this, and especially if you've got one of them, wear a mask because the suction on them isn't very good at all. But for those of you after something like this and have a dedicated hobby area that can house it, either get this one or the recirculatory one. They're absolutely fantastic. I'm so happy I've got it. This isn't a sponsored video, as you'll have seen at the beginning. There's no sponsored flags flying up everywhere. I bought this with my own money and just wanted to share with you what I thought about it so that you can make a more informed choice whether or not you're going to drop this much money on something that sucks air. However, I still want to give a huge thanks and a shout out to all of our patrons and to you guys for watching this video. I really do appreciate it. If you did find it useful or helpful in any way, even if it's turned you off from buying this thing, then please drop a like because that's the point of me being here is to show you these things so that you can help. Well, it should help you decide whether or not you should be dropping this amount of cash on something. So if it's helped you decide no, hopefully that's still a positive result. As I said, Regardless, I really appreciate you watching and taking the time out to spend with me today. So thanks again. This is Ross. I'm Fohammer Videos. See you next time.